Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to continue our conversations of experiments and surveys as we talk about Unit 1, Topic 4, selecting a research method. Throughout this video we'll be talking about different research biases and how you can prevent them. Whenever you are looking at the results of an experiment or if you're conducting one yourself, it is important to be on the lookout for any bias that might be present, such as hindsight bias, which is the tendency to think that one could have anticipated the outcome of an event or an experiment after after it has already occurred. Essentially, hindsight bias is the tendency to think that information is less surprising once you know it. This type of bias happens because once your brain learns something, it starts to make connections to all the other information that you know, and you start to see patterns. Remember, hindsight is always 20-20. There's also confirmation bias, which is when we seek information that aligns with our point of view, and we dismiss information that challenges our belief. For example, let's say you are driving in a car with your friend, and you drive by an accident on the side of the road. You look out the passenger window, and you see it was two men who were involved in the accident. Your friend who is driving looks over as well, but says nothing and keeps driving. Later in the road trip, you come across another accident. This time, the accident is between a woman and a man. Your friend right away says, look at that! More evidence that women can't drive! Notice how in this example that nothing was said about the information that challenged the stereotype that women are not as good as drivers as men. However, when your friend saw information that supported the stereotype and their worldview, they accepted it right away. This is an example of confirmation bias. All right, the next type of bias that we have to look out for is experimental bias, also known as researcher bias. This is when researchers unknowingly influence the outcome of the research. And one thing to focus on here is the researcher does this unknowingly. If they knew they were influencing the results, then, well, that would be fraud and there would not be a bias. For example, when conducting an interview with participants, the researcher unknowingly read the questions with different levels of excitement. This caused participants to give different types of answers, depending on how the questions were read to them. Up next is social desirability bias or participant bias. This happens when participants skew their answers to create a more favorable impression of themselves. This can also happen if the participants think the study is supposed to reach a certain conclusion. They might try to give answers that they believe the researcher is looking for. For example, let's say you're interviewing students at your school about their presidential voting record. The school is very conservative and has a pretty vocal student body. When interviewing one of your classmates, they tell you that they have only voted for conservative candidates. However, in reality, they've actually only voted for liberal candidates. They only said that to make sure they would not draw attention to themselves and fit in with the rest of their peers. One last type of bias that I want to highlight is the Hawthorne effect. This is when participants alter their behavior because they know they're being watched. For example, let's say that a company hired an outside company to audit their efficiency. They wanted to see what's working and what's not working. The employees are aware that they're being observed. They're more likely then to start working harder and put in more effort because they want to make sure that they're seen as good quality employees that the company can't afford to lose. They're altering their behavior because they know they're being observed. So we can see that bias can impact both the participant side and also the researcher's Side. And there's a variety of different things that can be done to try and limit and mitigate bias from impacting the results of a study. Things like following the scientific method, conducting a single blind study or a double blind study, making sure you have clear operational definitions set that allow for the experiment to be replicated, giving pre-screenings to participants, using placebos, and setting clear objectives all help reduce the amount of bias that could impact the study and makes it so our results are more accurate. Lastly, researchers should make sure their studies have reliable reliability and validity. Reliability is when the tests being used in a study are able to be repeated. And validity is a measure of how well the test actually measures what the test claims to measure. The more accurate a test is and the easier it is to be replicated by others, well, the easier it is for people to check for bias and confirm the authenticity of the test. And just like that, another topic review video down. Now you know the drill. If you're finding value in this video, hit that subscribe button and drop a like on the video. It helps support the channel. It's free and it lets me know to keep making more AP Psych videos. Also, don't forget to answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comments below. As always, I'm Mr. Sin and until next time, I'll see you guys online.